What's up, everyone? Blue here at Blue Bears Games. Uh, this week we are doing a Blues Budget Brews. This is our Commander series, or my Commander series. Uh, it's a budget tech. It's a budget deck. I make these for the conventions that I do and to sell online during Christmas time and all throughout the year. Uh, it's good for precons. It's a it's a it's a good way to start playing the game if you haven't, and it's also a good way to uh, get some ideas on how to build a specific build. Today's build is Nadir and Prava, and this is going to be a double kind of build. So we're doing Token Swarm. So going wide with a sub-theme of life gain, and with that, life drain, okay? There's going to be some stuff in here that's not aristocrat style, but can fit the aristocrat style theme, which is the when some when a creature dies, either on your side or your opponent's side, uh, you can make your each opponent lose a life or target opponent lose a life, and you can gain a life. So a couple different themes there, and I'll go ahead and show you how I accomplish that right now. So Nadir, Agent of Duskend, Duskenel, and Prava of the Steel Legion. So... Nadir is the weaker of the two here, and Prava is the main goal here. Uh, Nadir says whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then when it leaves the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens equal to its power. So you can see that that's token creation. Uh, on a different scale, I guess, it's a little differently done. It's just the only way black does it, I guess. Um, yeah, there are other ways, but that's pretty much, you know, black's theory is to... Sacrifice creatures to get something. Prava of the Seal Legion is a 1-4 that as long as it's your turn, creature tokens you control get plus 1, plus 4. And then for 1 white and 3 generic, you can create a 1-1 one, one white cre soldier creature token. So that's more token creation in white's form. So those are the two commanders. They are partner commanders. So you have to keep track of each thing separately. So we'll go from here. I'll show you the rest of the deck right now. And then <coughs> I'll give you a small upgrade guide. So, as I always do, I start with the lands. This is not very complicated. <clears throat> as far as the budget with black-white, it uh, it was basically what I could find that was budget to dual lands. So, Temple of Silence, the one that comes into play tapped, and then you scry one, adds a black and white. Same thing with Forsaken Sanctuary. And there's the Battlefield tapped, add a black or white. Or Zop Guildgate. Uh, Scoured Barons gains you a life when it comes into play and adds black and white. And Silver Quill Campus also comes into play tapped, adds black and white, but you can also tap it to scry one. And the Basilica, it's the bounce land, so it enters tapped, and then it enters when it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand, and it taps at both white and black. Uh, Drifting Meadow is a cycling land, polluted mire, same thing. Memorial to Glory, uh, it enters tapped, taps to add a white, and then you know you can sacrifice it to create two one one token soldier soldier tokens. Field of Ruin, as I try my best to put at least one land destruction spell in each deck I make for budget, it's probably. Just one of the rules I have when it comes to putting stuff together because you never know what you're going to find. And then Evolving Wilds thins your deck. Warp Landscape also thins your deck. It gets you lands. Spawning Bed doesn't come into play tapped, so it's really good for this deck. Taps out of colorless, and then you can sacrifice it paying six, of course, but I'm not really worried about that part of it. And then you can create three 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scions that also have the ability to pay for things that you can sacrifice them to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. And then the rest is split between plains and swamps, and as I always tell everybody on these videos, I will have the exact number in a deck list that is linked in the description below, okay? <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about the ramp section of this deck. Uh, Orzov, or black-white as it's uh, more commonly known, is uh, a little lacking. There's not a whole lot. There's some mana fixing in white, but not a whole lot of mana ramp. It's not green. So I got what I, I put in here what I could. We start off with the Traveler's Amulet. It goes and searches for a land, puts it in your hand, so at least it thins out your deck. It's not really ramp. It's more mana fixing, but at least it helps thin your deck. Same thing with Renegade Map. Uh, Orzhov, Clue Stone, the Key Rune, and the Locket, all of them are sort of ramp. I mean, they're three to cast, but at least, you know, they get somewhat of ramp. And, and then here's the good thing is that if they become useless, you can sacrifice two of them to draw a card, and one of them actually turns into a creature, a 1-4 throw artifact creature token with lifelink. So more life gain is actually fit the theme of the deck better than the other ones did. So it's not a big section for ramp, but it's just, you know, it is what it is. So we'll move on to the creatures, and the creatures are going to be split up quite heavily as far as what they do so we're going with a life gain theme we're going with a life drain theme and the life drain will be in multiple ways one of them's through life gain one of them's through death of creatures with death triggers so i'll go over all of them life gain real simple white has a huge advantage when it comes to life gain that's what it, one of its main things not exciting but it works so soul warden Lunark, Veteran, they're all going to do when a creature enters battlefield. It doesn't matter if it's a token or not. Uh, Anointer Priest does care, though. It, when a token comes into play, you gain a life. When a creature token, not a treasure or anything like that. Sutra Priest actually has two abilities. Uh, when a creature enters battlefield under your, your control, you gain a life. And then when a creature enters battlefield under an opponent's control, they lose a life. So, 
a little bit of extra stuff there. So facing another token generation deck, like a Scoot Swarm deck, this is really good. Uh, Impassioned Orator, Daxos Blessed by Sun, Core Celebrant, and Pious Evangel. Pious Evangel is a little different. So whenever it itself or another creature enters the battlefield under control, you gain a life, and then you can pay two, tap it, and then sacrifice another permanent. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's a permanent. You then transform or flip it to Wayward Disciple. And now whenever it itself or another creature you control dies, target opponent loses life and you gain a life. So that's one of those. This is more aristocrat style of the drain and gain game. Uh, but it fits the theme of the deck very well, so I put it in here. Uh, we have all that life coming in. What are we going to do with it? Well, Attended Healer is one of the ones that benefits from all that life gained. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, you create a 1-1 white cat creature token. And then you can pay three to have another cleric gain lifelink on the end of turn. And if you didn't notice, just about every single one of these guys and gals is a cleric. Not the demigod, though. So a lot of these are clerics. It itself is a cleric. So more life gain goes along with the theme here. Uh... And when I say life gain, this thing's going to, if, if it's running smoothly, will gain a lot of life. Now, remember, this card here only triggers for one time each turn, but it doesn't matter if it's your opponent's turn or not. So if you actually end up creating a token, gaining life, you gain another token. So uh, Marauding Blight Priest, one of the better cards in this deck. So whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. Instances of life gain, not for each one life you gain. So if you gain two life from something in one, uh, not separate instances, it's only one life that you... uh drain epicure blood same thing that's just a heavier cost and it's a bigger creature so blight priest is a three two epicure blood is a four four god favor eternal uh this one has inspired so it's a two to cast one one that has inspired whenever it becomes untapped you may pay three and if you do you put two one one white soldier enchantment creature tokens onto the battlefield so a couple of these next cards are going to be all about putting some tokens into play on top of other things so Thraven Doomsayer, so it's 30 cast 2-2, and you can tap it to create a 1-1 one, one white uh, human creature token. That's very racist. Uh, but Faithful Hour says, as long as you have 5 or less life, which hopefully you won't ever have to worry about in this deck, but if you do, other creatures you control get an Anthem of plus 2, plus 2, so they all get a, a permanent buff while he's in play. Uh, Curse Dag High Priest, so 2 to cast for a 1-2, has Morbid. The Morbid on this guy is that you can tap him and tap two untapped creatures you control, and you're creating enough tokens that that shouldn't matter, to create a 5-5 black demon creature token with flying. And then uh, this ability can only be used if a creature died this turn. You shouldn't have a problem with that. You have enough tokens that that shouldn't really matter. Ghoulish Procession. So, oh, you know what? That's in the wrong spot. We're going to pass that for now. Morbid Opportunist. Sorry. Uh, 3 to cast 1-3. Whenever one or more other creatures die... Draw a card, and you can only have that ability to trigger once each turn. That includes your opponent's turn. <coughs> Diagraph Horde. So this is a creature that comes into play, and you create tokens. So when it enters, create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens with Decayed. Uh, if you don't know what Decayed is, it's right here on the bottom. I'm not going to read that off to you. Uh, when you do, you exile up to two tar cards from graveyards, and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it to yours. You can do it to an opponent's. Drider is a 5 cast 4-3 with Reach. It is a spider, and almost every spider, if not all spiders, have reach. Uh, but whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can create a 2-1 black spider creature token with menace in reach. More token creation. Uh, we have all these tokens. We're going to do some sacrifice stuff. So Spark Reaper is a 3 cast 2-3. And then you can pay 3 and sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker. And you gain a life and draw a card. So life gain, a lot of things that benefit from the life gain. Drawing a card, and you get a sacrifice trigger out of it. If, a dies trigger, technically. Uh, Zulu Part Cutthroat. So this is an aristocrat card as well. Two to cast for a 1-1. One, one. When it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So that's the aristocrat part. Uh, same thing with Vindictive Vampire. It's the same thing, but it's a four to cast 2-3. So whenever another creature you control dies, it deals one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. Uh, Butcher of Malachor. Malakir, sorry. It benefits from death triggers as well. So it's a seven to cast 5-4 flyer. And when it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices the creature. A little bit of control aspect there. Uh, some of these, a uh, couple of the creatures in here come back from the graveyard on their own. That's so that you can have multiple things happening. So a lot of things like the Soul Warden rely on creatures coming into play. So if you have, you know, a lack of tokens for some reason, uh, you can still have other things keep coming into play. So you can keep gaining life and trigger other things. Tenacious Dead is one of them. It's one to cast 1-1. One, one. When it dies, you may pay a black and one of any. And if you do, you can return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. And these next three do that. They're all skeletons, I believe, as well. That's what they do. So this one's a two to cast 1-1. One, one. You can pay to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Adorable Coil Bug, not a skeleton, as I just said. Uh, two to cast 2-2 two, two, that you can pay 5 to return it from your graveyard to your hand so you can cast it again. Uh, and then Phantom General. Uh, it's a token deck, so creature tokens have an Anthem effect of plus 1, plus 1, and it says 4 to cast 2-3. So, pretty good there, because it helps the deck achieve one of its main goals, which is to go wide. 
So up next, we're going to start talking about some of the ways to produce tokens without actually having other things on the board. So we got some spells that create tokens, and there's a lot here. So this is token creation wazoo, you know, at the wazoo. Uh, recruit the worthy is a buybacker. It's one to chaos. Buyback three, create a one one soldier token. Raise the alarm two to chaos, create two tokens. Servo exhibition, same thing, two to chaos, two tokens. Gather the down town folk. Towns, folk, two to chaos, create two, and then it says fate flower again. Another one of those where if you have five or less life, you can all you, it ends up creating five tokens. Hopefully, you don't have to worry about that. Sworn companions, thirty chaos for two one ones with life link. Midnight haunting, thirty chaos for two one ones with flying. Lingering souls, thirty chaos for two one ones with flying, but has flashback of one black and one of any. So reusability. Rally the throne, thirty chaos, and you create two tokens and it has adamant. So if at least. Three white mana was spent to cast a spell. You gain a life for each creature you control, and you should gain a lot of life out of that. Called the Calvary, four to cast creates two two twos that have vigilance. Allied reinforcements, four to cast for two two twos that are just knight ally creature tokens. Captain's Call is four to cast to create three tokens, three one ones. Battle Screech is four to cast to create two one one flying birds, and it has a flashback by tapping three untapped to white creatures you control, and that shouldn't be an issue in this deck. Increasing Devotion, so it's 5 to cast to create 5 one, one human tokens, and if this spell is cast from your graveyard, create 10 instead, and it has a flashback, so you can cast it from your grave. Storm Herd, so 10 to cast, I know it sounds like a lot, but some games last a while. Uh, you can create X 1-1 one, one white Pegasus creature tokens with flying, where X is your life total, and that could end up being a lot, just so you understand. Vessel of Ephemera, it's an enchantment way to put some in. Uh, it's 2 to cast, it's an enchantment, it's 3, sacrifice it, and put 2 one, one white flyers into play. These are spirits. Uh, and then the next couple, and one of them is going to be one I accidentally revealed earlier because it fell into the middle of the pile, are going to be enchantments that stay on the board and rely on you, other things happening. Three of them are going to be for life gains. So, and they'll create tokens. Two to cast for this enchantment, and at the beginning of your end step, just yours, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 2-2 two, two flyer. It's a griffin. Angelic Accord is a four to cast, and at the beginning of your of each end step, not just yours. So when you're creating tokens and you have a couple of things out, like uh, Soul Wardens and all those guys, you know, all the good girls, actually, most of them. Uh, anytime a token comes into play and you gain life, if you have four life gained each turn from one token coming into play, you'll be able to create a 4-4 four, four Angel Flyer. And Retreat to Emeria has Landfall, which allows you to do two things. Uh, create a 1-1 one, one, uh, core ally creature token, or... And this is important because this is a going wide deck. So if you play a land and you need to buff your guys, you can do it just by playing land. Instead of choosing the token creation, you can give creatures you control plus one plus one until end of turn. That's important to finish out games. This one has a great dual use. And then the accidental reveal earlier was Ghoulish Procession. It's two to cast, it's an enchantment, and whenever one or more non-token creatures die, and there are a lot of creatures in here as well that are not tokens, uh, create a 2-2 two -two zombie with decayed. Okay? I didn't mean to reveal that earlier. It happened, unfortunately. So that's a couple of ways to do token creation. We have uh, Utility up next. Utility will include destroying things on your opponent's side, drawing cards, and sacrificing things. So, we start with a Revoke of uh, Existence. It exiles an artifact or enchantment. Disenchant destroys an artifact or enchantment. Return to Dust destroys or exiles an artifact or enchantment. But if you play it on your main phase, you can do it again. Spark Harvest uh, use, takes advantage of using the tokens that you created. You can sacrifice one of them, or you can pay an additional mana. And destroy an art... Or, I'm sorry, not an artifact. A creature or a planeswalker. Bone Splinters is similar, only this one, you don't have the option of paying mana. You have to sacrifice a creature to destroy a creature. Mutual Destruction. Uh, it has Flash as long as you control a permanent with Flash. Uh, don't believe there's anything in here. You could put something in here, but it's not worth it. Uh, and again, as an additional cost, you must sacrifice a creature to, play the, to cast a spell and you destroy a creature. Severed Strands, again, another additional cost, but this time you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness and destroy a creature and opponent controls. Rite of Oblivion, again, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a non-land permanent. You exile a non-land permanent, and you can flash this back. And that's important that it's non-land permanent, so you can actually get rid of enchantments with this card. I know there's a couple in here, but you never know what you're facing, so it's good to have options. And then, finally, as far as destruction spells, Despark, uh, it exiles a permanent with mana value 4 or greater. And trust me, some of those... Uh, Commanders that are four or greater can be nasty, so it's nice to have that option. Continuing with that theme, we're going to go with sacrificing, say, a token, and we're going to go and draw cards with it. So village rights, so you sacrifice a creature, draw two cards for one. Costly plunder, same thing, but you can sacrifice an artifact as well if you need either an artifact or a creature, and you can draw two cards. Painful lessons, so three to cast, target player draws two cards, you lose two and loses two life. You're not worried about your life total on this, usually. Damnable pack. Two black and X. 
Target player draws X cards and loses X life. Again, you're not worried about life so much. You should be gaining so much that you can draw a ton off of this. You just need the mana to do so. Sacrificing creatures is part of this deck as well. Uh, and you get benefit from it. So Witch's Cauldron, uh, it's an artifact, so it stays in play. And then you pay two, tap it, and sacrifice a creature. You gain a life and draw a card akin to the Spark Reaper. And the last card in the deck is actually just utility for going wide. Uh, it's basically what the other creature does in this deck, which is an anthem for tokens. So tokens you control get plus one, plus one, but they also get vigilance with this out. So it all fits in the theme. It all is just so you can go wide. So if you don't want to do an attack theme for this, you don't have to. That's the good part about this deck. It has multiple ways and avenues to win. So you can do the drain and gain by gaining life. Actually, let me put it another way. You can gain and drain. That's what this deck does. You gain life and you drain. You can sacrifice creatures to do an aristocrat style, or you can go wide and attack with a lot of tokens. So that's the deck in a nutshell. It's actually pretty fun. And this one, again, is available for sale. Uh, it's going to be at the convention coming up in a couple weeks. And then it, if it doesn't sell at the convention, it will be available on my Facebook page. But we will go through all that later. Next up, we're going to go and do a small, hopefully quick, upgrade section. So let me get started on that right now. Okay, so as far as upgrades go, I'll start with the lands like I always do. You've got the pathway, the black-white one, which is Bright Climb and Grim Climb Pathway. It's a good option, especially on a budget. Caves of Coilus, which was just put in Dominaria United. All the pain lands are put in there, and pain lands, as far as this deck goes, doesn't really matter how much pain they cause. And then you've got the new Innistrad lands that um, come into play untapped if you control two or more lands, and that's, for, this for this color combination, it's Shattered Sanctum. Great option there. Uh, as far as some token generation, you've got Keldron Outpost. Castle Ardenvale and the king here would be Field of the Dead, especially if you have a lot of different named lands. That's a great option as well. Uh, one other one you can do, which actually leads into, uh, uh, segues into my sacrifice outlets, is Spring Jack Pasture. It creates goats, and then you can sacrifice them to create mana. Not bad for any section of this, because you get a sacrifice, or I'm sorry, you get a death trigger, you get mana. It's a token creator. It's all good. Another outlet for sacrificing is High Market. You can gain life off of it, and that's great in this deck as well. And then Phyrexian Tower, you can sacrifice a creature to gain mana, which is always good. It's kind of a, I would say, a quasi-rampish there. You have the ability to draw cards from some of your lands, and I mention these in a lot of my videos because they're actually good for decks that don't have access to blue. So War Room and Bonder's Enclave are all great options for that as well. And then Black has the ability to really get going with Castle Loctwain because, again, you can draw cards with it, and the life loss isn't really that big of a deal because you're doing a lot of life gain. Uh, another option, these are a little expensive in the next three. You got things like Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, and Cabal Coffers, which I always suggest in a black deck because it helps ramp. And it gives you a small advantage there, especially if you need like a mana dump section, you can do that. And then you have Ancient Tomb, which again, monetarily expensive, but it works. Ramp, the ramp section is a little different because we're not really ramping here. We're mana fixing, but we're getting lands out of our library. And that always helps in the later draws. So you got things from white like Tithe. Gift of the States, and one of the things I don't mention on a 3-plus color deck is Land Tax, because it goes and gets basics, and in a 2-color deck, you're going to have more basics than 3. Uh, White also has things like Archaeomancer's Map, Monologue Tax, and Smothering Tithe, all great options. I know I suggested them last week for a deck, but they're good enough to mention more than once. And of course, you can always throw in the uh, the thing that's in every pre-con from Watsi, which is Soul Rings, Arcane Signets, and I like to throw in, in a deck like this, Liquid Metal Torque, because... While I always mention that red is great with Liquid Metal Torque because you can turn opponents' commanders into artifacts and then Vandal Blast them, you can actually do that here in white as well. White even has more options for that. So great options there uh, for ramp as far as what you're limited to with white. Black doesn't really have any. And then we got the dudes section. And when I say dudes, I, I always mean your creature section. So there are things like Cruel Celebrant, Not Ears Nightblade, and Blood Artist, and, and also Sir, Sir Conrad. There are more... Uh, aristocrat style, but you can add them in there if you wanted to do that instead, and that's what makes this deck great is because you can go in a couple different directions. Uh, things that benefit from sacrificing, like Pit Pitiless Plunder, uh, Taste of Karlov, because you can benefit uh, multiple death triggers, and then Taste of Orzov Scion is a great uh, addition as well. And they're all here so you can see them. Uh, Hanweir, Militia Captain, benefits from having as many, you know, all the creatures in play. Uh, you've got things like Adeline Resplendent Cathar, You've got Oketra the True, definitely helps create tokens there. And then you've got one deck that I make for one of these budget decks is Thalus Reverent Medium. It would slot into this deck very well as well. Uh, some benefits for other things. These are utility creatures. you got like Mentor the Meek, so you can draw cards off of all the little guys coming into play. you got Ailey Eternal Pilgrim. Uh, that will help you benefit for um, all the life you have. And that's just a couple of suggestions I have for the dudes. We're going to move on to the spell section. This is going to have all your little utility stuff that you need to... to make this deck shine a little bit more. 
but not his budget. So we have murder effects, and that includes murder itself, and that's all blacks, different ways to kill creatures and different effects and ways to go about doing that. Uh, you've got Hour of Reckoning. It's always a good one. Uh, Hour of Reckoning in a token deck is fantastic because it kills all non-tokens. Uh, and then Cleansing Nova lets you choose how you want to do things. And then you have Disenchant effects, and I've shown you a couple of them in here. They're already in here, but there are plenty more that you can take a look at. And then you've got token creation, like mass ones, like Blot Out the Sky. That's a really good one. White Sun Zenith, it shuffles back in, so that's always good. And then you've got things that help you go search for things. That black, That's black specialty, like Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, etc., etc. Uh, another thing you can do in the spell section here is you have uh, black's ability to draw cards. While it's not equal to blues, it's, it's actually not horrible, and it actually gets better when you're in a life game deck. Things like Knight's Whisper or Read the Bones and all of the other ones that can do that kind of thing. Good options in a life gain deck because the life loss that they create isn't really all that bad, and you're not in blue. So it's kind of helpful to have a way to do so, especially when the drawbacks of black are negated. We're going to go over some enchantments real quick. So enchantments are basically just to help for the deck with token creation. So we got things like Retreat the to Amiria, Bitter Blossom, and Court of Grace. All of them are great for token creation. Uh, Anointed Procession can help double the tokens you're creating, which is always nice. Uh, and then Bastion of Remembrance will actually help forward the uh, Aristocrats theme, where you're sacrificing creatures and then draining your opponent's life. Uh, same thing with Meat Hook Massacre, which has lately been the king. It's one of the better cards created probably in the last, you know, 10 years for an Aristocrats-style deck. So Meat Hook Massacre, while expensive, it may have dropped a little since the uh, the banning. So it's good for us commander players. Uh, Dictate of Erebos takes advantage of all those tokens dying by making everybody sacrifice their creatures. Same thing with Grave Pact. Uh, and then you have some card draw, like Necropotence, or Necropotence, however you want to say it, and Phyrexian Arena. And again, Necropotence and Phyrexian Arena's big drawbacks are negated because you have so much life gain going on that the loss of life does not really matter. Uh, some artifacts that we can look at. So if you wanted to fully flesh out a sacrifice theme here and go the full Aristocrat style instead of the, the life, the, the gain and drain, you could do the drain and gain. Uh, you can do things like Ashnod's Altar or Phyrexian Altar. And then you can add a Skull Clamp in here for all those 1-1s. One -ones. You can start turning them into draw engines. Uh, Idol of Oblivion helps you draw cards if you've created tokens. You've got the monuments, Oketra's and Bantu's monuments. Uh, Oketra creates tokens, and Bantu's monument will help you do a drain and gain kind of thing. Uh, Bolus is Citadel, so good for... The, it, you're, with the life gain that you have, you're negating the negative to, bon, uh, to Bolus is Citadel. You can play cards off the top of your library by paying the life, and you should be gaining enough life off of your spells that it doesn't really matter how much you're paying for them. Uh, another thing is, another artifact would be Sword of the Animist, so you can do a little bit more ramp stuff. Normally, I'd like to I'd like to start putting that in the ramp section, but unfortunately, it's actually an artifact, and I know that I have a couple other artifacts in the ramp section, but this one's just good for other things too, so it's a buffer as well. Uh, God Pharaoh's Gift helps drain your opponent faster, and then one of the better and more expensive, unfortunately, token creation artifacts out there is Retrofitter Thopter, or I'm sorry, Retrofitter Foundry. Good artifact, it, it actually uses the tokens to create more tokens, and you know, you get a lot of benefit out of that. And some of the walkers that you can uh, take a look at. So there were a couple that do what you want. So they create tokens, they help sacrifice tokens, they buff tokens. So we're going to talk about that. So we start our uh, thing off with the Lilianas. So I'm sorry, we're going to start with Elspeth. You've got three of them. Elspeth Terrell, Elspeth Knight Errant, and Elspeth Sun Champion. All of them buff creatures. They create tokens. Some of them, their ultimates remove your opponent's side of the board, so it's always nice. And then you've got a, a Liliana Dreadhorde General. Always good. Uh, it definitely helps when things are dying and people are losing life and creates tokens that can die as well. And then you've got Soren Grim Nemesis is a good addition here. And I think that that's the Soren that was put in the Lil Walker's Secret Lair recently. And then finally, our last thing is going to be the win con. And this one's going to be real simple. We're going to go with Revel and Riches. And the reason for that is, um, as far as the upgrade section goes, there's a lot of things in here that create tokens. So things like Monologue Tax and Smothering Tithe tie in together great with Revel and Riches. So why not just double down on that theme and go with it? So my suggestion here would be uh, Revel and Riches with some of the upgrades, other upgrades that are in here. I wouldn't throw Revel and Riches in here by itself without a little bit more token creation. I'm sorry, treasure token creation. But it's a good option to help on top of having another win con that would be including going wide and buffing your creatures. That would be draining and gaining. That would be aristocrats. And then you can throw Revel and Riches for a surprise win. So those are some of the suggestions I have in here for you. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about it, just go ahead and I'll put my uh, contact information up here so you can contact me if you want to talk about it. Please bear in mind, however, that the easiest way to get a hold of me is that top option there, which is to contact me on Facebook, and that's bluebearsgames.online. Other than that, I do... Uh, sell these decks as I mentioned before 
The information will be up here on your screen. Uh, usually what you can do is just contact me through the Facebook page, or if you really want to, you can go to the Facebook Marketplace. That is where I've started putting all of my products for sale. So you can go ahead and do that as well if you feel safer doing it through that method. Also, if you like the content and like what you see, I do a daily video every day for pack racking, and every week I try to do a longer form video that goes over deck builds. So if you could, please subscribe to the channel, and then like the videos that you do see when you do watch them, and then share them out to somebody who may possibly look into build any of the builds that I have up there right now. Currently, this one is a commander deck. Uh, so share them out to anybody who would like to watch them or on your social media pages. And that is my time for the week. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next week. Have a good one.